Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So we're going to have a, a great session today around having a health and vitality or a healthy and vibrant body or, or whatever, uh, whatever that choice is, is for you. And, and what's very important about this is to acknowledge that uh, you're, you're a creator. We've had such uh, some, some very incredible results uh, for people creating health, uh, let, let's call them with air quotes, miracles, uh, people regaining their eyesight legally blind. We're up to four people that have emailed in with that. Uh, in fact, if there's anyone on live here, you know, maybe mention some, some amazing health transformations that you, you've had if you've been around a while. We've had people uh, message in that, that have been unable to be, get pregnant for a very long time, and, and now that's not a problem anymore. Uh, in fact, we've had people who were, you know, lots of pain in their body, unable to move and walk, uh, able to, to walk again, uh, diabetes no longer being a problem in their life. Um, what else? Tumors. I had uh, a couple of people send me in some x-rays to say, look at this. My doctors can't believe it. Uh, so, so lots of, uh, lots of amazing, uh, changes, uh, Lots of, uh, lots of amazing, amazing, amazing uh, changes. And, uh, and this is, it's very uh, amazing to watch. And so I wanted to spend, uh, spend a little bit of time to, to share uh, some stuff that we covered in, I think the second to last session of the Superconscious uh, Transformation uh, part of uh, Mastery and, and share a little bit of science and things with you. And then we're gonna get into a very, a very deep, uh, recode. So, so that's going to be fun. So let me just share my screen. Uh, you, you don't all have access to these notes. Um, they're in a, they're from a different course, but I thought I'd just uh, use them, uh, to, to, to help us get, get a bit of movement here. So basically you create it all. Uh, if you put your body in the right conditions, it will produce a healthy outcome. Your, your body wants to work uh, for you. And, and really, uh, miracles are just things that we don't understand. Uh, we, we have this really strange society where we're trying to understand everything. And, and just think of the, the, pos the impossibility of, of trying to understand it all. I mean, you know, uh, we, we like to say that, uh, you know, we're, we're swimming in a field of information. Uh, but but it's just as accurate to say that, uh, you know, we're, we're just carbon and hydrogen that's found a way to understand that it's it's carbon and hydrogen. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's absolutely it's amazing to to think about the miracles that are around us every single day that we we simply just take take for granted. Uh, and so, you know, miracles are there. Everything. Everything is a miracle. And if you, you do understand that everything's a miracle, there's. There's nothing but the miracle, you know, any health transformation, you know, uh, it is the miracle in the end, because if you think about it, there's many people who who do uh, whatever is said, but get results and don't get results. So think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Uh, you take 100 people and they all start taking, I don't know, what's the latest craze at the moment? Uh, uh, Turmeric right? They all, they all start having turmeric. Let me ask, did all a hundred get the amazing results that it were, that was said on the bottle? And we all know, of, of course, of course not. Hey, uh, of course not. Right. So the ones that do, it's because of a miracle. It's, it's not like it's this, everything always works. Who agrees with that? It, it, it's always the miracle actually, <laughs> because if it wasn't, <laughs> Uh, you, you know, like then there'd be something that just works to everyone and that would be it, you know? So there's, there's actually nothing else but the miracle. And, and that's what's uh, amazing to me to, to, to realize is that the miracle is when we put our body in the right conditions and we see the transformation, yet we all try to figure out and, and replicate, uh, replicate, well, they did this or, or that, and, and that's what, what made it happen. So, you know, miracles are actually the, 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 um, are the common, uh, it's actually the rule, not the exception. 
So, so a little, a uh, little story from uh, 1981. So, you know, 30 years ago, uh, eight men in their 70s and 80s uh, went out to a monastery uh, north of Boston, and they were to imagine uh, that there was they were 22 years younger. Okay, and you know they they had two different groups or, or, or whatever, and they had it um, uh, one group imagine that they were 22 years younger and, and play it out, and others just uh, you know kind of reminisce. Anyway. Uh, in five days, they took measurements and compared them to those taken before the study. The bodies of the men from both groups were physiologically younger, structurally and functionally. Although those who pretended they were younger improved significantly more than the control group. Think about this for a second, okay? Their men grew taller as their posture straightened. Their joints became more flexible. Their fingers lengthened as their arthritis diminished. Their eyesight and hearing got better, their grip strength improved, their memory sharpened, and they scored better on tests of mental cognition. The men literally became younger in five days, right in front of the researchers' eyes. <laughs> Matt, you can't imagine you're one again. <laughs> Is that uh, is that a, is that a wow moment? Is that wow for some of you to to hear that or to witness that? Wow, hey. So so think about that for a second. Now uh, that that's from uh, uh, Joe Dispenza's book. Uh, we are the placebo. So. Uh, you are the placebo, sorry. So you can have a look at that a bit more. But, but here's some amazing things as well about, um, you know, uh, how quickly shifts can change. Okay. Now, now just, just consider this for a second. Who's heard of um, disassociative identity disorder? Uh, it used to be known as multiple personality disorder. And in fact, I got pulled up uh, when I last taught this that I was saying it the wrong way. I think Dr. M pulled me up, maybe on as well. So who, who's heard of this multiple personality um, situation or, or disassociative identities? It's where a person can live out different identities. D did you know, however, that as they shift identities, their physical symptoms can shift? How about this? How about this? By just changing a personality, this is reported in the, the New York Times. And, uh, you know, if you want, I can, I can get you the link. Uh, this is actually clickable. But, uh, but the, a woman admitted for diabetes baffled her physicians by showing no symptoms of the disorder at times when one personality who was not uh, diabetic was dominant. Some multiples carry several eyeglasses because their vision changes with each personality. Report, Dr. Braun reports the case of a young woman who in one personality was color pine for blue and green, a problem that ended with a successful treatment of her multiple personality condition. A young man was allergic to citrus fruit in some personalities, but not others. From the National Library of Medicine, okay, is their visual functioning had bigger variability across uh, <laughs> across different personalities. The, it, it's a physical difference, allergies, right or left handedness, or the need for eyeglass prescriptions change from the National Alliance of Mental. Anyway, we, we can go through pages of this and you could do a Google search and find it. But here's what, what, what you must get from, by the way, who thinks this is pretty interesting? Here, here, here's what, what you must get is it was the same person and those guys were the same guy. There was just something different they were doing. It's the same, the same genes, you see, same cells, same person. True? It, it, it's, it's the same person. But the expression of those genes and those cells and that person was different. So just, just note that down. It's not that they changed what they were expressing, how they were showing up. That's what changed. Is that true? That's what changed. As they did something, as they did something, what they were expressing outwardly as their body changed. 
Does this make sense? The body changed. Is that true? I just want to get some feedback. You guys getting it? It's not that they did anything. They, they didn't have to eat anything different. They, 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 they shifted something else. They shifted something else. Yes, I know that our cells regenerate, uh, you know, every certain amount of years and months in different areas of the body. I know all of this. But what if it was possible to, to change the expression of what's already there? Would you guys like to know how? Because in my opinion, this is what's happening when we make these big changes using Recode. This is what happened. So, so let, let's discuss this about how our internal environment shapes our genes. Okay, so DNA is stored in the nucleus of every cell in our body. It contains the raw information and instructions that make us who we are, okay? Our DNA uses these instructions to produce proteins, okay? All a cell makes is a protein. Muscle cells make actin, myosin, skin cells make collagen, elastin, immune cells make antibodies, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So proteins are the raw materials our body uses to construct our physical anatomy, but also the functions of our physiology. Proteins control our immune system, digest our food, heal our wounds, provide molecules for communication, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, proteins are the expression of life. Okay, so, so proteins ex express life, proteins are made in the cell, the cell at the nucleus has a DNA, okay? I've got a picture here for you. Uh, so, so you have the DNA uh, in, inside the, the cell, which is in here, which, which creates proteins, which builds the body. We'll get to that in just a second. But right now, proteins are the expression of life. Now, when they mapped the human genome, okay, they expected that because there was 140,000, that they'd have 140,000 different genes. And this is because the human body makes 100,000 proteins plus 40,000 regulatory proteins. So they just assumed there was one gene per protein because who's all, you know, it's in your genes. So you think, well, I don't have the genes for that. Well, there's something wrong with my genes because if proteins create the body, well, then there must be one gene per protein. That was the assumption uh, in, until the early 90s when they, they went and, you know, did this research. Okay, so it's amazing when they found that there was only 23,688 genes. So genes work together in cooperation, turning off or upregulating and turning uh, on and downregulating, whichever way you want to want to call it, to create the protein. Okay, so it's like there's 23,000 of these, and I want you all to get this. We all have those 23,000. When someone's changing what's going on in their life, they are doing something to upregulate, which means basically in layman's terms, turn on certain aspects or downregulate and turn off certain aspects. And basically, a different recipe creating a different protein. So the question is for all of us, by the way, is this interesting for you guys? The question is, how do we do that? How do we do that? I mean, it's, it's not like you can't be like those uh, elderly gentlemen and, and go out and, and pretend that it's younger. What, what, how do we do it? How do we do it? Well, well, obviously, you know, the recode does this, hey, but, but how, okay, how, how? There's, there's, a, there's a lot of study in this, and I highly recommend that if this intrigues you and you, you love science and you want to go and learn more, then, then you do. You go and you study some Bruce Lipton's work and Dispenza's work, and you, you go get some more science and you, you find your way down to Norman Doig, uh, and you, you'll keep on pulling on the thread and you'll find the, you know, the books like I've read, like The Physics of Miracles, et cetera, et cetera. You, you know, you'll you'll keep on finding it and keep on finding it and keep on finding it. And, uh, and, that's, and that's, that's really, really uh, interesting. What, what I want to do is give you a quick summary and then get us into actually doing it. So, so really quickly, uh, our genes don't seal our fate. They're actually an enormous library of possibilities 
just be wait, just waiting to be to be used. All these different potentials that we have uh, are there, but the question we must ask: How do they do it? And the world of epigenetics, which means above genes, is the place to get started. Okay, so epigenetics teaches us that the environment that we put the gene in controls a lot of its expression, not all, but a lot of its expression. And it's a, it's a very, very important thing to understand that we have our mind and how we interpret the world. And we have environmental signals and the brain goes down through the nervous system down to our gene, which then uh, is like a signal turns some on, some off. So it's the environment that we're creating. And, and as I showed you before, this goes down into the cell through receptor sites, uh, gives the correct instruction, the instruction release the proteins which builds our body. Now, uh, what, what's interesting about this to kind of wrap it up is uh, evolution has been so spontaneous. It's been so spontaneous that, uh, you know, certain different species get thicker um, wool or, or different, uh, uh, you know, different size and stuff, which is obvious. Uh, you know, different colors and stuff, it's obvious. But how does this happen? Well, there's a lot of research saying it happens because there is a desire, desire, I want to be able to reach that tall branch. And that desire sends instructions to, to the cells and says, I want that, I want that, I want that, which then releases a different genetic expression which then creates different protein to then actually increase the size of things. Isn't that wild? Isn't that why actually that's how a lot of our evolution happened. It's why you'll see, you know, a giraffe is a really tall net who does desire. Once that field is created, then that field is available for the next group to come in. That, that's actually how it happened. It was a conscious intent to, to do something or to be something. I wish I could have that. I wish I could have that and a focus in actually changing the way that the proteins were expressed to actually create a different, a, com a completely different species, hey? So the desire of one animal to be bigger or to be warmer or to do this, kept that focus, which created a, a, a new a variety of it, which blows my mind uh, when, uh, when I think about that. Uh, however, when you feel into what I'm saying, who, who knows this is the truth, that you are in control of it, you know? Who, who knows? It must be. It must be you. It must be your field. The challenge is, is that you came into a morphogenic field that is pre-programmed. It's pre-programmed. Now, the best way to to help you understand uh, morphogenic fields uh, is, is to look at children and how fast they're learning things. You know, it's like, it's like the funny tale of, of the man who couldn't get his uh, computer working. So he said, Let, let's call the experts and goes to the neighborhood kid, uh, the kid next door and says, can you come help me with the computer? And, and it's true. It's because why is it true that each generation coming in is able to pick things up faster, uh, understand things faster? It's because we're tapped into a field. And R Rupert Sheldrake talks a lot about morphic fields, morphic resonance, and the morphogenetic structures that we can create. And in fact, uh, Superconscious Recode is, is a morphic field of its own, which is a morphic field is a field of information that the more it gets used, the stronger it gets and allows intuitive access to that field. You know, uh, there is a huge morphic field around certain religions and certain leaders. You can tap into their field, the more it gets tapped into. Many of them, however, are um, very confused fields, very confused fields. There's, there's lots that used to be pure and healing and now are full of a lot of fear. But anyway, uh, you, you, you come into a, to a world, into a family uh, that has, has a field structure available for you already, that it's instructing your genes how to be inherited from your mother, from your father, and it's instructing your genes. However, you, just like everyone else on the planet, has the same 23,800, whatever genes they are. 
And so what your job is, is if you want to have a different expression, you must uh, reconnect to that field and start sending down the correct instructions to your unconscious to then start creating the right, uh, the right expression. I don't believe this needs to take that long. Uh, in fact, many people have uh, been in this work for only a couple of months and they have been able to create uh, absolutely new bodies. Yeah, completely new, like they, they weren't able to walk or run before. And now they're telling me about the hikes they're going on or, or they had this, this thing or that thing that they completely can. The key, as you know, is that we're not going to try to fix where we are now. We're not going to try to fix the past. True, everyone gets this from this work. I don't have to uh, bring that up again. We are, we are going to create. We're going to create. We're going to create the new you that has no relationship to the you that's here now. It has no relationship. There's no basis of, of this is makes that. It's, a, it's just a creation. It's a complete creation. And, it, and if you're serious about creating uh, a healthy body, the, the one thing you're going to do is be giving it instructions and it's healthy. You're healthy. And, this, and, and then ex, uh, expressing how you want it to be and feel. T too many people who struggle with health problems uh, consistently giving instructions to their body that they are not healthy and need to race and get something else. Do you guys agree? They're too busy saying that this is what's wrong, I need that. This is what's wrong, I need that. That they've created identity of a body that's always broken. They And, and you know, sometimes... This is the people closest to you and, and you see them and you have to, you have to say, hey, you got to create, not, not problem solve. You got to create. You got to create. So, so my, my question is, are you willing to let go of who you've been to create who you're becoming? Are, are you willing to let go that there's a problem with you? Are you willing to see yourself as the pure creator of those symptoms. Because it's not easy and it's going to take courage because you're going to have to let go of the idea that you've got a problem, which means that no one's going to come and save you. Many people that have a problem, they're always looking to be saved uh, on a self-conscious level and are enjoying the intention and the idea that someone's going to save them. That someone has to be you. And it has to be to finally let go of this idea that there's something wrong or broken with you. And it's, it's just really, really interesting.